Our lady was the daughter of a noble family and was known for her exceptional beauty and intelligence. In a strategic political alliance, she entered into matrimony with Cosimo e de' Medici, the Duke of Florence, at the tender age of 17. Endowed with brains and charisma, she exercised considerable sway over her husband's court as the spouse of one of Italy's most influential figures. Despite her status, she played an active role in politics and was known for her diplomatic skills. Renowned for her appreciation of the arts and one that also acted as a generous patron to many artists, including the esteemed Benvenuto Cellini and Giorgio Vasari. She was also particularly interested in fashion and was known for her elaborate and expensive clothing. However, her life was not without its tragedies. She lost several children to illness and her husband was known for his infidelity. But despite these setbacks, she remained an influential and respected figure until she died in 1562. So let's now take a trip back in time and consider the life of Eleanor of Toledo. Eleanor of Toledo was born in Alba de Tormes in Spain in 1522. Her father was a powerful figure, serving as the Viceroy of Naples and Lieutenant Governor of Emperor Charles V. In 1534, when Eleanor was 13 years old, she moved to Italy with her family to join her father at the Spanish Viceregal Court. Yet on one occasion, she caught the eye of Cosimo de' Medici, who was visiting Naples with his cousin, the Duke of Florence. This chance encounter would set the stage for Eleanor's future as a powerful and influential figure in Renaissance Italy. In search of a political ally and a wife, Cosimo initially pursued Margaret of Austria, but she refused the proposal. As an alternative, the Emperor offered him one of the daughters of the wealthy Viceroy of Naples, which would solidify the Medici ties with Spain. Cosimo chose Eleanor of Toledo, the younger and more attractive of the two sisters, all this despite her lack of fame or influence at the time. Eleanor and Cosimo married by proxy in March 1539 and quickly began corresponding. Eleanor eagerly worked on her Italian reading skills to better understand her fiancé's letters. In June of that year, Eleanor set sail from Naples to meet Cosimo in Florence, where they were married in a grand ceremony at the Church of San Lorenzo. The couple went on to have a peaceful and loving marriage, with Cosimo remaining relatively faithful and dedicated to Eleanor throughout their long union. Their marriage produced 11 children, including five sons and three daughters who survived to adulthood. It helped to solidify the Medici dynasty in Tuscany and allowed them to establish themselves as a significant European power. Initially promoted by her husband as a public relations exercise to reassure the public of the stability and respectability of the new reign, Eleanor's high profile as ducal consort in Florence was marred by emphasizing her marital fidelity, numerous children and bountiful lands. As time passed, Eleanor's involvement in politics gained her considerable influence in Florence, to the point that she became a trusted advisor to her husband. She even served as a regent during his frequent absences, ruling during his military campaigns in Genoa, his illness and the war for the conquest of Siena. Eleanor's station as a regent established her position as more than just a figurehead. It also now emphasised her growing political skills. was not content with just being a ducal consort. Her business interests, especially agriculture, drove her to own vast tracts of grain crops, livestock and mining ventures. With her wise management and salesmanship, she expanded the profitability of the Medici estates, benefiting both herself and the peasantry. Despite initial scepticism from the Florentine people, she won their support through her financial contributions to Florentine charities and advocacy 
for her husband's policies to restore the Duchy's independence. A pious woman, Eleanor donated to several convents and was eventually approached by Juan Palanco to find a Jesuit college in Florence. Although she initially refused, negotiations with Diego Lanes led to the establishment of the city's first Jesuit school. Eleanor became a constant negotiator to Cosimo on the order's behalf and founded many new churches in the town, although she did not wholly embrace their entire society and devotion. In summary, Eleanor's interest and shrewdness in business, her support for her Florentine charities and policies, and her involvement in religious affairs helped to solidify her position as a formidable figure in Renaissance Florence. Eleanor, like her husband, was a prominent patron of the arts, commissioning works by Agnolo Bronzino, Giorgio Vasari and Niccolò Tribolo. Bronzino decorated Eleanor's private chapel in the Palazzo Vecchio, while Vasari was commissioned to create a fresco in her apartment depicting famous women who had achieved great deeds. This redecoration was considered an effort on Eleanor's part to reshape her public image away from motherhood and towards other virtues such as wisdom, courage and prudence. Eleanor purchased the Pitti Palace in 1549 as a summer retreat for the Medici family and commissioned Tribolo to create the famous Baboli Gardens in 1550. These gardens were lavish and exclusive with no access allowed to anyone outside the Medici family. Finally, part of Eleanor's will was the creation and funding of the prestigious and exclusive convent, the Santissima Concezioni. Built around the Sal de Papa of the prominent Dominican monastery, Santa Maria Novella. Despite her stern portraits, contemporary accounts of Eleanor reveal a different picture of the Duchess. She was practical, determined and charming, albeit despite her persistent illness. A passionate traveller, Eleanor loved to gamble and was fashion conscious, employing gold and silver weavers for her clothing. However, her preference for writing in Spanish instead of Italian caused communication issues with her husband and the Jesuits had to send Spanish priests to negotiate with her. It's been discovered through forensic examinations in the 21st century that Eleanor suffered from significant calcium deficiency due to frequent pregnancies, which may have caused her poor health and appearance. In 1562, Eleanor and two of her sons, Giovanni and Garcia, fell ill with malaria during their travels to Pisa. Sadly, both of her sons passed away before her and within weeks of each other. Despite suffering from pulmonary tuberculosis, Eleanor endured until December the 17th, when she passed away with her grieving husband and a Jesuit confessor. Her funeral took place on December the 28th, and she was laid to rest in the Medici crypts in the Basilica of San Lorenzo. Rumours circulated for centuries that Garcia had killed his brother, leading Cosimo to murder him with his sword and causing Eleanor to die of grief. However, once again, modern forensic evidence has proven that the Medici family's account was accurate and Eleanor and her sons succumbed to malaria. Eleanor's historical significance has often been overlooked since her death, with many seeing her merely as a consort due to her lavish portraits and negative press from the Florentine people. However, her impact on Florentine history must be considered. While the Pitti Palace was only partially rebuilt at the time of her death, it became the primary residence for Tuscan rulers and is now a vast museum complex. But Eleanor's legacy extends beyond the palaces she commissioned. Her founding of Santissima Concezioni also contributed to her enduring influence. The convent's artistic commissions, including a bust of the Duchess and the Medici coat of arms painted on the communion window, further reinforced her role as a patron of the arts. Today she is remembered as one of the most influential women of the Renaissance, 
and as a symbol of power and influence that women were able to wield during this era. Thank you so much for watching the video, it's really much appreciated. And don't forget to support the channel by subscribing, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.